Hey everybody, Jam for Mad here with your Tech Tech and More, and today I'm going to be replacing the power switch on a Mono Price Select Mini 3D printer version 2. I picked this printer up off of Amazon about two years ago, and I'd say about a, the one and a half year mark, the power switch went out. Essentially what it does is when you go to turn it off, it turns right back on. So the switch is stuck in the closed position. As you can see on the screen, I'm turning it off and it's basically just turning right back on. Alright, so what we want to do first is take the bottom plate off. This consists of six screws, one at each corner and then two in the middle sides. I've only, I've only got four of the screws in since I've done other repairs and enhancements. As you can see, the blue plate on the top, that's just a ventilated cover or side panel, which allows for two things, better heat dissipation and it also allows the power cord for the heated bed to run around the side instead of underneath the bed through a grommet hole in the base, which caused the power cord to break in several places. All right, now let's open this baby up. Using a regular Phillips screwdriver here, nothing special. And if I didn't mention it already, I'll have links in the description to all the tools and items that I've mentioned as part of the video. Now that we have it open, the switch is in the lower corner with the two red wires where my finger's pointing. This should be a pretty easy repair since this is a two prong inline power switch that pops into the case. So I'm going to pop it out um, through the back and then close the unit up so I can repair it while it's sitting. So the switch I bought, I had to buy a box of them. I couldn't just buy one. I bought about 40 off of Amazon. It wasn't too expensive. I think it was like eight and a half dollars. And uh, the way I figured it out is I had to take the power supply and to determine the power settings for the switch. Later on in the video, I'll go over the power requirements of the switch in more detail. So right now, I'm just trying to figure out my game plan as far as how to get the switch out. As I stated earlier, the switch is held in by two clips on the top and the bottom. So I figured I'd use a screwdriver to work the clip on one side and pop it out about halfway. And it just takes a little bit of working. And there it goes. I'm going to spin it around so you can get a better look at it. You see there how it's coming out a little bit on the bottom? All right, let's get in closer for a better look. Now I'm just gonna use my fingers, give it a little bit of a wiggle, and there it goes, easy as pie. All right, now that the switch is out, I'm gonna put the bottom back on so it's easier to work on, and I gotta make sure to line up the SD card and USB slot. If you don't do that, the screw holes will not line up, my friend. All right, now let's screw this bad boy back together. All right, that's all it took. Flip it down, and we'll go ahead and start to replace the switch. Now, for some reason, I thought I could use my fingers to pull these connectors off, but they are on their way too tight. So instead, I opted for a screwdriver, which worked out very well. All I had to do was gently pry off the connector, and it was good to go. And while I was taking off the second wire, it occurred to me, both wires are red, so I'm running the risk of getting them confused. So instead of taking both of them off at the same time, I decided to take the new switch and then hook it to the wire that I just disconnected and made sure to connect it to the corresponding prong from the busted switch. And doing it this way pretty much guarantees that I can't screw this part up 
Wouldn't everybody agree with that? I think so. Okay then, let's go ahead and get our switch on. Now I thought I might have to recrimp these, but the connectors slid right on when using my fingers, and they were pretty good, nice and tight. You gotta love that, right? And as you can see on this other wire that I'm gonna take off here, there's a rubber grommet. I think that's to prevent shorting if for some reason they get bent and they touch. So you just slide that out of the way and uh, do the same thing and it pops right off. Now just be careful when you're with that grommet. When I went to put it back on the other wire, I noticed the grommet had slid back inside the case. And with this unforeseen challenge, I had to go find a pair of needle nose pliers so that I could fish the grommet out of the case. And there's something to be said about having the right tool. Because now, the grommet was saved. Alright, alright. Both wires are connected. The grommet's been saved and slid back on. For the most part, the switch is now connected. And since I'm a true man of my word, as I promised earlier, here are more details on the power ratings of the switch. And as you can see by the side-by-side -side comparison, the switches look almost identical. Even the ratings are identical. The only difference is, is in the appearance, the new switch is black instead of red. And now that the new switch is wired, we can test it out. I'm going to connect the power now. Be very careful, we have exposed wires. I don't want to see anybody get shocked. Alright, I've flipped it on. And you can't see it, but it is turned on and working. So I'm going to turn this baby around so we can see that it is working. And as you can see the screen is lit up and is functioning as expected. Okay we're almost there. Now that we've completed the test we can go ahead and remove power and place the new switch in the off position so that we can finish this installation by turning this baby around and popping that switch in. And it only took a little bit of working, but the switch popped right in. Smooth. Thank you for watching. And while I have you, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for videos like this and more. And thank you for visiting Tech Tech and More.